Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today, Friday, November 2nd, 2012. Again, my website is ggnonline.com if you'd like to help me out. Also on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 and my uh, YouTube channels. And all these headlines and stories will be in YouTube's video description. Okay, so first off is, of course, the hurricane and the fallout. Bloomberg diverts food generators from devastated Staten Island to New York City Marathon. So, of course, this... Uh, this kind of has changed a little bit, but um, fresh off his climate disruption driven endorsement of President Obama, Mayor Bloomberg has chosen to divert critical food supplies and power generators from desperate residents of Staten Island to Sunday's New York City Marathon. And that shouldn't be a surprise to you because remember, this was the same individual that uh, put, uh, put this out, which was from October 29th, 2011, protesters deal with the cold and the Occupy movement, snow and no power after generators removed from Zuccotti Park. So the fire marshals uh, removed six gas-powered generators and about a dozen gas cans from the park saying it was a safety issue. Never mind the safety of the people if they freeze to death, right? And round two, forecasters predict nor'easter may hit East Coast Election Day. So they could get hit by another storm right now. And uh, that could be why... Thank God Marathon has been canceled, Staten Island woman says so. She was a victim of Sandy reacts just after hearing about the cancellation of the race this Sunday. So she says it was the right thing to do as Staten Islanders continue to suffer. You can go in there and check out the link. It will be posted. Uh, New Jersey to use military trucks as polling places. So many of you have probably heard this. The military deploying trucks to serve as polling places on, a, on election day in storm-battered communities. Just to go to show you how democratic we are, it's so important that you got to get out there. Nothing will stop democracy in action, right? Uh, but what? Also this, military delivered 24 million gallons of fuel. White House tries to stem crisis with emergency delivery. Also, you have what? National Guard and um, other types of entity entities there as well. So troops and that. I was just talking about it in yesterday's videos about how it's so... You know, we got to have the government uh, without, you know, without that, what would we do? There would be chaos and you pay all these taxes and, and uh, it's uh, hardly ever that uh, police actually prevent crimes from happening. But then as far as uh, the damages go, you don't get justice a lot of times. Um, if you try to seek out justice yourself, they call it vigilantism, right? If you want to sit by and watch some offender of you, uh, someone that's done you or your family or whatever wrong, uh, they get to go to jail, and then people have to, uh, other people, innocent people, have to pay for that. They have to suffer, too, because they have to house and clothe and, and stuff this person. Not saying jail is a great place or anything, but it's just like they're tra trying to carry out justice. They're trying to do all these things, and they never do that. They don't recover people's stolen property. And so as far as national emergencies like Katrina go, you know, what happened? They got, they got botched, like 9-11, all, you know, all this stuff now. Uh, st stuff is still going to happen. FEMA promises 400 generators, but few show up and running. So, and I've heard stories about people actually um, uh, dying of asphyxiation, CO2, uh, carbon monoxide, so poisoning. They said that uh, four generators were installed overnight. That's 1% of its stock days after the storm has hit. And then there's this story, Sandy starved New Yorkers dumpster dive. They've begun dumpster diving outside key food market looking for whatever they can. And um, you better be careful because out in, uh, in uh, what was it, Greece or Italy, I think it was Greece, they're actually starting to put locks on the garbage cans to stop the poor Greek people from trying to find food any way they can, right? And then they had to try to clamp down on bartering, like I was saying. When people start to do things voluntarily and help each other, uh, they try to clamp down on it because they want to be there for you, but they'll never be able to do that. They'll never fulfill the promises like the lying politicians that are doing everything they can to convince American people that they represent them when they will be sold down the river. Their children will be paying off debt from the 1980s, you know, in 2050. It says here, we need food, we need clothing. Staten Island residents plead for help three days after Sandy. Actually, there's people uh, supposedly in buildings taking dumps in their own apartment. That's that's pretty pathetic. Like somebody said, why can't you just put it in a bag and take it out and throw it out or do something? You know what I mean? Why would you? defecate in your own living quarters come on man especially in an apartment building where other people have to live there you know yeah and that's what sucks because 
it, like I said, it's it's an artificial environment, and 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 people's mentality, and people's um, uh, it's mind control basically. They've been socially engineered, and they don't know how to think for themselves. So, you know, they they'll do things like this. You know why? Why don't they go outside and do it? Well, if they do, they can get they can get arrested, right? For dump taking a dump in the alley or something like that. You know, public urination and stuff like that. Uh, but but the other thing too is is what is a lot of concrete, a lot of buildings. You know, possibly not a lot of places to go, and that's part of the artificial environment that I was talking about. The residents of Staten Island are pleading for help from elected um, a hole officials. They call them officials, representatives, I just call them a-holes, uh, begging for gasoline, food, and clothing three days after the uh, mostly harp and weather modification engineered storm came and hit. We're going to die. We're going to freeze. We've got 90-year-old people. This uh, Donna Soli told visiting officials, you don't understand. you got to get your trucks down here on the corner. It's been three days. One of the most devastated neighborhoods was overwhelmed by a violent surge of water, that was described as being a supersized wave as high as 20 feet with water rushing into the streets like rapids. So this kind of um, verifies what I was just saying and the advice that I was giving to viewers, which was don't trust the Red Cross, don't give them money. Mostly because I saw this, hurricane relief, you know. Ooh, now it's up to $725,000, right? Gonna help people. Well, the Staten Island Borough President says don't give money to the Red Cross. That's what he said. And he goes on here and he says that the Red Cross is an absolute disgrace and even urged the public to cease giving them contributions. He says, you know, I went to a shelter Monday night after the storm. People were coming in with no socks, no shoes. They were in desperate need. Their houses were destroyed and they were crying, where was the Red Cross? Isn't that their function? They collected millions of dollars. Whenever there's a drive in Staten Island, we give openly and honestly. So where are they? Again, another thing that verifies what I was just saying yesterday. New Jersey kicks out Sandy volunteers because they aren't unionized. So, utility workers from across the U.S. are descending on the northeastern states left ravaged by the storm. But some volunteers making the trek are being told they can't pitch in since they don't belong to a union. According to a report published Thursday, uh, crews coming to assist all the way from Alabama Alabama's Decatur utilities were turned away because they aren't unionized despite, ma despite making the 800-mile trip. They quote uh, this Decatur worker who tells the network that he and his colleagues are frustrated being told, in essence, thanks but no thanks. So they're basically just waiting in Roanoke, Virginia to see if the authorities will change their minds. So it says the death toll from the storm may hit 100 and recovery efforts are expected to continue for weeks if not months. At the same time, though, things may be off to a slower start in New Jersey if non-unionized volunteers are refused any further to help. And uh, catch this story. I kind of had it since the 23rd. Sussex Rural Electric Cooperative owned by those it serves. So it goes on and it says that when we buy uh, stuff like gas, groceries, clothes, you name it, we almost always buy from a business whose primary goal is to make a profit for their owners or shareholders. Profit-based private enterprise has served America well, but in some instances, another approach has worked too. The cooperative method, and New, one of New Jersey's stellar examples of this approach is right here in Sussex County and celebrates 75 years of operation this year. It says uh, this person is on the board of directors, and it goes on and says if you want a dispassionate analysis, look elsewhere. This is a tribute to what I and many others regard as a great operation. The idea behind the co-op is simple, voluntarily mutual associations owned and operated by the people they serve where any excess capital profit in the business world is returned to its members. That's our motto, owned by those, it's, uh, the, by those it serves. Sorry. And uh, then we have this, uh, Tokalu Tokalau, 100% solar powered. A tiny collection of atolls in the South Pacific is now completely able to support itself with solar energy, the first nation in the world to do so. So um, uh, one megawatt solar panel array has been erected across the three atolls to provide it more than 1,400 residents with 150% of the electricity needs. So it comes at a cost of $4.7 million, which might seem pricey considering the territory's entire GDP is only 187,000 pounds. But the long-term savings from not having to import diesel and petrol will more than make up the cost in the long term. So the original plan was to generate 93% of the uh, country's needs, or the territory's needs, with the remainder coming from burning coconut oil. 
oh, but that's going to be bad for the environment, <laughs> right? Uh, it turns out that the panel can actually manage up to 150% of the energy requirements for the area, but the coconut oil is still around for cloudy days, working by night and emergencies. In Canada, Commons approves bill to ban mass during violent protests. So, <laughs> you, they only pro term pro uh, violent because the, the, the police and the governments themselves provocateur and dress up like protesters and start beating on each other and stuff like that. That's why it gets violent. So it's, so it can um, so it can turn away from. Usually, a lot of those protests are, are middle aged people. They're, they'll have older people. They'll have kids in there, and they're peaceful. And then they'll have these, um, uh, like I said, um, crap bags go in there and do this. These government uh, workers, police, and stuff like that, authorities. And the irony, of course, is that just like the tinted windows where the pigs can tint out their windows so that you can't see them, but they could see you. That's the new standard. See, you can't have uh, you can't have the mask on to avoid the Big Brother police surveillance state where there's freaking cameras everywhere monitoring you. I'm sorry, uh, surveilling you. And um, but uh, yeah, you can't you can't avoid your you can't avoid that. You can't have a you can't have a mask on. But uh, I've seen those provocateurs, the cops and stuff like that. They have them. They're wearing them. And all the riot police, <laughs> I mean, how often do you see those guys' faces, right? Especially, like, now that they're becoming, like, Mexico or the, and, and Eastern Europe where they have freaking ski masks on. New York law banning masks at protests to be challenged. This, of course, came, um, this thing from Canada actually came from New York. And I think they're doing it in England as well. Uh, and, and this is the irony, too. In England, they're actually trying to propose uh, to ban protests altogether. So they just want to ban it all. You know what I mean? If they could just ban protests like in Bahrain, they'd do it. And then we have a teen killed in Cherokee County SWAT standoff. It goes on, he says, he threatened to kill his mother. This is insane. Deputies said that they, after an hour of negotiations, I'm sure that's what it was, uh, Messina fired a weapon or broke the glass somehow. They probably fired a shot or something. A sniper who was in position across the street fired one round from his rifle in an attempt to protect the negotiators who were within a few feet. So Messina was shot in the abdomen and taken to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Also, <laughs> there's been two incidences, I think it was in New York, where they actually shot um, the hostages. The, the SWAT shot the hostages. Police militarization in Colorado. We have cops and fatigues toting automatic weapons dispersing anti-eviction activists. Pretty sad story. He ordered activists off the private property, said be advised that everybody on the property is trespassing. Yeah, there's some pictures for you. He and his fellow officers looked like they were dressed for combat in a war zone, but in fact they had come to evict a woman from her home in Idaho Springs, Colorado. And it was part of a Occupy foreclosure. So here's some more pictures and photos of uh, what's going on here. These guys think it's so cool. It's like, oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so cool. Yeah, see, this guy is even putting out the vibe. The homeowner facing eviction was apparently underwater on her mortgage uh, with the U.S. bank. And she had asked for another 30 days so she can look for a place to live, but they had other plans, the U.S. Bank and the county sheriff's office. If you were sent me this, check it out. Link will be posted to the video of a dog shot by Omaha police officer. So like, apparently they took the guy down and the dog was protecting his, his uh, companion and they, they shot him. Not the first case. I can't watch it, though. It's As a pet owner, as a dog owner, I just couldn't do it. It's like I said uh, to someone in the comment board, it's like, they do that to me, man. It's like the movie, There Will Be Blood. Secret Service agent on President Obama's protective details, dead of an apparent suicide. Oh, yeah, see? You know, these guys, are I think, are the last ones to, to kill themselves, to be honest. All over a romantic relationship with a foreigner? I mean, come on. Obama granted clemency to just 22, less than any modern president. Now, why is that? I answered this before. He doesn't seem to care. That's right. He doesn't like going to meetings. He doesn't like to talk to people. He'll go into places, and then he'll leave right away after he talks. He is a real elitist. He's not the only one that's starting to care less. The Americans, record low TV ratings for World Series. So, But it didn't stop the fans from going bonkers. The city erupts after World Series sweep. And then tonight's Raw, the wrestling, may set record low audience. After peaking in 2007, NFL attendance steadily has declined. And look at this, Miami home crowded, outnumbered by orange seats. Domestic violence rises by a third when England wins or loses a big soccer match. Actually, two cases where grenades and explosives were thrown into soccer matches here. Breast cancer survivors are saying stop sexualizing our disease. After Germany 
Ecuador demands their gold to come back. Could the U.S. become unstable in the near future? Possibly? Invaded? Go down? Thank you.